Hi, and welcome to lesson seven here in our electrons unit. In this lesson, we're going to talk about electron configurations of excited state and ground state atoms and how to tell the difference. Just to remind ourselves, let's remember our model of electromagnetic radiation production and how it works. It involves the atoms starting at the ground state, absorbing energy, transitioning into the excited state, and then falling back down to the ground state with that electron emitting a particle of electromagnetic radiation. Because that's the model that we use to describe how electromagnetic radiation is produced, it's important to understand that because the electron changes place, its electron configuration is also going to change place. If we consider what happens to electron configuration in the excited state, the electron configuration of that atom is going to have to change to reflect the fact that we are now in the excited state. We can recognize this when we see it by understanding that we'll see a violation of the normal ground state electron configuration when we look at the electron configuration of an atom in the excited state. It's also important to understand that there are many possible excited states that an atom could take. So just because you might not see the one that you're thinking of in this discussion, it doesn't mean that it's not a valid configuration. Let's try an example. So this is not in your packet. So here we have calcium, and what I want you to do is I want you to write down three possible excited state electron configurations for calcium. Pause the video, take a moment and do it on your own, and then when you're ready, let's go through it together. So it's important to remember that the configuration that we're given on the periodic table is the ground state configuration. Calcium's basic ground state configuration is 2-8-8-2. So with that in mind, let's look at some possible excited state configurations. Here are three that I just came up with. 2-8-7-3, or the expanded version that you can see over on the right, 2-8-1-1, or 1-8-8-2-1. Notice a couple of things when I came up with these configurations. The first is that my atom has not gained or lost any electrons. That's incredibly important. If you look at each of these excited state configurations, you can see that there are still 20 total electrons. The second thing that you can see here is that each one of these is different than our ground state configuration. I've taken an electron from the kernel of the atom and boosted it up to a higher energy level without having totally filled that principal energy level, or I've expanded the atom's overall valence. Either way is totally fine. But again, it's really important to remember that we haven't added or removed any electrons. It's also really important to notice that we haven't put any additional electrons into energy levels that can't hold them. For instance, 1-9-8-2 is not a valid configuration because that second principal energy level cannot hold nine total electrons. It can only hold eight. But as long as we adhere to these two rules, only putting electrons in energy levels that can hold them and making sure that we don't add or remove any electrons, we can always write valid excited state configurations. A good test to see if a particular configuration is excited or ground state is to count up the total number of electrons in the configuration and compare it to the configuration for the atom on the periodic table that has the same atomic number as that total number of electrons. If it looks the same, it's in the ground state. If it doesn't, then we know that that atom's electron configuration is in the excited state. Another thing we should talk about here at the end is this notion of occupied versus full. When we talk about occupied, we mean at least one electron is in the particular location. And when we talk about full, we mean that the maximum total number of electrons that's allowable is in the location. In the case of carbon up here, we know that carbon has one totally full principal energy level, the first one, and it's got two occupied principal energy levels. Carbon has two totally full sublevels and three occupied sublevels. And carbon has two totally full orbitals and four occupied orbitals. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. If it doesn't, take a moment and write down any questions that you have before we wrap up. Thanks so much for watching this discussion of excited versus ground state electron configurations and how to tell the difference between them. Make sure that you can do the following things here at the end. Make sure you can determine if an electron configuration represents the excited state or the ground state of a particular atom. Also make sure that you can identify any valid or invalid electron configurations for particular atoms. If you can do those two things, you're doing great. If not, that's okay too. Take a moment and write down any questions that you have, and you can always leave them for me in the discussion below the video, or you can always get in touch with me through the information in the info field. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.